Hey guys, what's going on? IAQ Josh here. I am on site at a property down in the South Florida area performing a comprehensive moisture and mold assessment. And while doing so, I found the need to implement one of the tricks of the trade, if you will. So I thought I would share this information with my YouTube family. Come on, let's check it out. All right, so we're here within the master bedroom, and as you can see, or may not be able to see, but you do now, there is a indentation, what was previously a bump on this wall, and of course, I walk up, I start touching things, and my finger was able to go through the drywall a little bit. So, this is generally an indication of a couple of things. Number one, it could just be shoddy workmanship, we can't quite rule that out, but number two, and more often than not, we find that these paint bubbles or blisters tend to be related to moisture intrusion. So, first thing I did after we discovered this was pull out my moisture meter, we stick this on the wall, and it goes crazy. So if I'm going by this meter, this meter says that this wall is soaking wet. So what I then do is switch over to a pin style meter, in this case I'm using a Delhurst meter, and we're simply gonna place this meter on the wall. This meter also tells me that this wall is wet. However, there is no indication other than this one bump that this wall contains moisture. I'm not seeing any damage to the floor. And before I'm going to include this in my report and tell this potential buyer that this entire wall needs to be ripped out, there's a couple of things that we can do to verify this. So now we've navigated over to the guest bedroom, looking at a similar wall with a window atop roughly two feet of drywall, and what we first want to do before we implement this little trick of the trade is we want to take comparative moisture samples. So now taking some readings on this wall, I'm not finding any anomalies. Nothing stands out. Looks like we have average moisture content within this wall. So with that said, I'll normally go to another bedroom. And in this case, we do have a bedroom and I'm going to execute a similar collection of comparative moisture readings. All right, so now back in the master bedroom. And now that we've checked two bedrooms for comparative moisture readings, and I'm finding both of those bedrooms to show what I consider to be normal moisture content, I'm now going to share with you one of the tips of the trade that might change your life. All right, so while it may not change your life, it'll definitely make you a better moisture investigator. All right, so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be removing this outlet cover. Again, Nothing too invasive, we're not beating up these walls, we're not destroying anything. So now that we've got the outlet cover off, we wanna bring the camera in close just so you guys can see a little bit of what I'm seeing. We are going to be looking for rust, corrosion, oxidation, what have you. And in this case, we can see over here where there's a green tab to the right in between both outlets, we definitely can see that there's some level of corrosion. So now what we can't do is we cannot make the assumption that because we are finding corrosion on this one outlet receptacle that this entire wall should come out. So just like we did with the moisture comparative readings, let's head back over to the other bedrooms and take a look at those outlets. All right, so we're back over in the guest bedroom. We've got the outlet cover off. We're coming in close, we're doing our investigative work, and as you can see, it's obviously clear as day here for me because I am on site, this outlet receptacle does not appear to have any corrosion, oxidation, or rust whatsoever. All right, so now that we've done our due diligence and collected multiple forms of data that can be used for comparison, I can confidently say and include in my report that this here wall should indeed come out. And I'm pretty confident that we are gonna find some level of water damage as well as potential microbial growth behind that wall. All right, so while not revolutionary, I do hope that that little tip of the trade will be beneficial and can be implemented by some of you out there. As always, if you found some good information and value in this video, please, hit that big thumbs up button, I greatly appreciate that. And if you want to continue following me while I fight the good fight and educate the world on everything that is indoor environmental quality, 
please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And it looks like that's a wrap for this one, so I will see y'all around.